Hi, this is Dan here. I hope you're doing really well. Today's lesson is about flying around the neck effortlessly. I've got a couple of questions about that recently. And what I did is I just got a drum beat there, 120 beats per minute, and I'm just improvising. And sometimes for lessons, I will write out exercises or I'll take something from my book or courses, books or courses. But today I'm not doing any of that. I'm freestyling and I'll give you a few ideas. So I'm in the key of F sharp minor. Sort of Dorian sort of thing. All these notes sound great for this sort of funky, you know, groove improvisation. Okay. And that's the first point is that there are two things really. If you want to fly around the neck, you need to know the shapes. You need to know what notes are going to work. Okay. That's probably quite obvious. The second component of it is technique. So first of all, F sharp minor, if I'm doing this improvisation, there are broadly speaking, you know, five shapes you want to know. That's the first. If you get to the first one all over again, I don't know if you noticed that because I'm doing this video and I've got, you know, I've got to get in frame and everything. I'm a little bit cramped up here. And the first thing to, to do before you know your shapes is to hold the bass in a way that doesn't restrict you. So when I used to teach one-on-one, -on -one, I saw this a lot where the bass is parallel to the back of the chair. Okay. And now, and perhaps the neck is going downwards a bit and it's just very sort of restrictive. Also lots of stiffness and not relaxing. And so when you come up the neck, you sort of run into your own body a little bit. And so what I'm doing and what a lot of players, a brilliant guy to, to watch is Hadrian Faro. And if you look at his, he's got an extreme sort of example of what I'm doing, like a classical guitar posture, but I sort of move the bass away from the back of the chair, angle the neck up a little bit, you know, make sure you're on a comfortable chair. This isn't brilliant. This is like a nice studio chair and I'm usually facing that way. So make sure you're practicing on a decent chair. Um, I've got no strap, but if you need to have a strap, set it up that you've got that. But sort of with that angle, base up a little bit more, it's um, contacted with my leg, my body and my arm. Look, I don't need to grab hold of the neck at all with this hand. And that's extremely important. That's another common thing that I used to see a lot. Okay. So now I have sort of unrestricted sort of movement. Okay. So that's the first thing. Now the shapes, you absolutely need to just sit down and in this case, learn, you know, this F sharp minor all the way across. And a good way to practice it is just, you know, go up and then slide to the top of the next shape and just improvise immediately. Don't go up and down scales. It's a bit boring. That's the next shape and they're hammer-ons. I often think a good strategy is to practice the thing that you're concerned about. So flying around the neck. Well, find, you know, don't wait for like a book or a course, you know, the kind of things I offer kind of um, think about it yourself. How can you tackle this? So that's one way. Learn your minor pentatonic shapes and start to practice moving around the neck in a musical way. So there I'm using hammer-ons, a bit of ghost notes. That's a pull off. I love sliding between these shapes because it sounds to me like music. And so practice that thing. So look here. Another very important bass technique is kind of shifting because that's what we're doing here. We're going from one place to another. So if I go, so I'm aiming for this F sharp here on the A string. I've got to get from there to there. So perhaps just practice that look octaves. Just shifting nice and smoothly from one place to another. You know, I'm not running into my body here. I've got the angles I was talking about. Mm. 
that's just the next next octave up. It's just when you go eight frets up, drop down a string, eight frets up, drop down a string. There's a little cheeky octave there. And one down, okay. And notice how this is something I do all the time. My first ever book was based on this. Is I, I, I make I make my practice sound like music. Okay, because if it doesn't, I personally I will get too bored with it and I probably won't do it. So you make up your own stuff. So I'm practicing doing a shift there. And one, two, in one beat, I've gone from the second fret to the ninth. That's quite a decent shift. And if you learn your shape, your minor pentatonic shape, well, you can do the same thing here. And the same thing here, 14th fret E string. Now, just because the way I am, I'm a little bit cramped here, okay? So... Don't keep your body and your arms locked in the same shape. It's a little bit different here, look. I'm angled a little bit more here to get in. You know, I'm maybe leaning down a bit. Be prepared to move, move your body a little bit. Although I am trying to drop my shoulders. I'm trying to relax as much as possible, not to strain anything, play with a light touch. All of these just basic kind of technical uh, principles should be you know, kept in mind when you're doing this. So we have the technique and we've got the knowledge of the shape. So I'm gonna to stick to this F sharp minor sort of Dorian thing. So there I'm just going from the F sharp first finger on the second fret. I'm sliding to that shape. Vibrato, slide, hammer on, pull off, ghost note. I love those techniques and I think those help facilitate moving around the neck, especially slide. If there's something you could do. That same F sharp minor pentatonic. But going across and up, just one string. And it's all about patterns, this first pattern. Kind of three frets. Then you've got two Lots of two frets. And then you've got another three frets. That's a completely symmetrical pattern. Before you get to the octave. So forget that bit. Just know that pattern really, really well. And a lot of this is about learning the patterns and then practicing moving kind of away from just this area of the bass. Certain styles of bass playing are going to require you to, to move to different registers of the neck more than others. You know, funk bass is just one of those. You know, rock players tend to do that a lot. A lot of great bass playing happens just around here and you don't need to fly around the neck, but I think it's always a good idea to, to just push your technique as far as you can so that if ever you come up against a hard bass line, you, you'll be able to do it. Okay, so I hope that helped a little bit. I will put links below to some of these, you know, courses and books that I've got that might help you, but just, um, just you know, think about the thing that it is that you want to, to learn. So in this, in this case, the questions about um, you know, accessing the upper, the upper part of the the bass and sort of flying around and it's just like a bit of a puzzle you know you do have to make sure you're holding the bass properly and you're adhering to you know some some decent technical foundations there aren't really many rules if you lined up 100 different bass players amazing ones you could see them doing different things so there isn't one hard and fast way but you know look at some of my lessons or other lessons that that teach you how to hold the bass well and, and how to, you know, at least to get the basic kind of rest strokes and what your fretting hand should be doing. Keep the wrists straight, you know, all these basics. And then, you know, get the angle of the bass and then just work on octaves. I can't stress how much this minor pentatonic scale, I just love it. You know, there. I'm just sequencing and also accenting a bit. So instead of playing the scale up and down, that's boring. 
In this case, I'm not slapping or doing, or doing alternate plucking. You can have hours of exploration making up stuff in the similar sort of way that I've done in this lesson. So I hope that did help you. If it did, please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. And yeah, any questions, leave them below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.